Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about minimalism. Not the trend of everything being white with a few plants here and there and um, everything being peacefully organized. I mean um, the act of actually purging yourself of everything in order to have a simpler life. So I had read a few articles about this um, and watched a documentary about it and all these other things and I sort of feel like we're getting minimalism a bit wrong. I had read an article about a girl who had tried to live in a minimalistic way and basically she had gotten rid of almost her entire wardrobe and um, a lot of things in her apartment and things like that and at the end she was saying well I don't feel happier and that is sort of one of the goals of minimalism. It is to sort of purge yourself and um, feel happier. But the real goal of minimalism is to actually appreciate what you have. So um, rather than freaking out every time there's a sale and going on and buying a bunch of things, don't. Look at the items you want. Look at the items that you've been really, really hoping that you can buy and buy those items. Just because something's on sale doesn't mean we need to run out. I mean, especially in the United States, we see it all the time. We see um, things like Black Friday, where people are literally shoving each other and trampling over each other as soon as the doors open, just to try to get a TV they don't need or, you know, um, something, you know, some item. And it's kind of a dangerous way to look at our lives. Um, it just proves how much we have been affected by the idea of consumerism and the idea that we'll be happier if we have more. So I think where the message of minimalism sort of gets lost is if it doesn't make you happy, if every day it doesn't make you smile, get rid of it. And um, it doesn't really come down to how often do I use it and things like that in my mind. It really comes down to how much joy does it bring you. So for example, I have a few gowns or pieces that were handed down to me by my grandmother and they don't get a lot of use. Um, I would say it's kind of rare. There's blazers or just designer pieces that really can only be worn for like galas or um, really special events, but every single time I look at them, I think, God, they're so beautiful. I'm so thankful to have this. What a treasure. Whether um, it's a piece that I was able to buy myself at Bergdorf Goodman or um, sometimes even just like my ratty old vans, I think those are things to hold on to because the whole point of minimalism is really just to get rid of all the crap we don't need. Every single time we go to like Forever 21, for example, we end up buying like a shit ton because we're like, well, I have $200 or I have $400 or whatever. Um, I'm gonna go like on a shopping spree. I have this extra cash, let's go do it. And what ends up happening is that you end up buying all this stuff that you like, but you're not in love with. And then it sort of sits in your closet and then you, over time start to feel a little guilty, like, damn, you know, my friends all went to that concert shortly after I went to Forever 21, but I didn't really have 160 bucks to spring on the ticket at that time, but now I really regret it because I feel like we would have had way more fun if we went to see Strome in concert. And it's kind of viewing your purchases in that way rather than I need to have it, I need to have this, I need to have that because you actually don't. Like you probably now are looking at those t-shirts and those dresses and you're like, God, I don't even wear this stuff. I'm like, I guess I should just donate it. But I hate like letting go of clothes. What if later I decide to wear it? I mean, it's a pretty safe bet that unless it's like a gown or a really, really special piece that really only has like an appropriate place and time to wear it, that um, you're never gonna if it's been like a year or something like that. That's what minimalism I think comes down to. For me, I am mostly driven by minimalism because one, we move a lot. So it's really convenient to only bring the things that I love. So that includes just, you know, um, probably no more than 20 pairs of shoes, which probably seem like a lot to people, but you think like gym shoes, a few pairs of heels, boots, Uggs, house slippers, 
um, sandals, and that's and like you know all of your basic pumps and things like that you that you would need for special occasions to everyday wear. So that's actually not a huge shoe closet when you really think about it. Um, though as I'm saying it, I'm like, oh god, I'm so blessed and so grateful. Like I can afford 20 pairs of shoes. Also, you know, the clothing that really means a lot to me, the clothing that I wear frequently, um, and then the jewelry that really means a lot to me. And I actually am really um, picky about jewelry. So. Um, I get rid of it all the time on my Depop, um, my Depop store and on Poshmark and things like that because I just don't wear it. I, I don't wear it. People give it to me as gifts all the time and I always say, please, you know, I love you guys. Thank you for asking me what I want for my birthday. Don't get me jewelry. I won't wear it. I'm so specific about the kinds of things that I find comfortable that um, I don't wear it. And... Um, so it's really just like, I really keep it to the core things. That's one of my big motivations when it comes to trying to keep my life as minimalistic as possible. The other thing is, is this good for the environment? Fast fashion is bad for the environment. Fashion is the second most wasteful industry after oil. Oil, guys. <laughs> That's insane. So. I feel like so often people look at um, big YouTubers like Lydia Elise Millen is a great example. And they think, God, her entire closet is just, you know, Manolo Blahnik and um, Bulgari and, you know, Louis Vuitton and things like that. But the thing is, is that she invests in those pieces and then she has them for a lifetime. And even when she gets rid of a piece, in order to buy a new piece, it's generally um, she sells she sells a piece, and and because luxury goods um, tend to have a really high resale value, it's going to someone who cares about it and wants it. It's not going to a landfill. But when you get rid of something from Forever Twenty One, you know you may give it away, um, or you may throw it away. And a lot of times, even if you give it away, it may still end up thrown away because it doesn't have a value. And um, even when the products are made, they're not made in ethical conditions and things like that. So that is a huge one for me. And I love companies like Everlane. This is actually an Everlane shirt. Um, Reformation, just have really ethical practices and really great environmental practices when it comes to producing clothing. And I think the key is to really invest into your pieces. So buy less, but have more of a use for what you have. Buy less and care more about what you have. Buy less and appreciate more of what you have. And I think that's really the key to minimal minimalism. Like, I think it's just dumb to just throw away everything because someone told you to. Don't do that. Just, just take a second and try to view the idea of consumerism a little bit differently. You know, stop feeling as if you need, and I'm guilty of this, like I used to be this way. Stop feeling like you need to keep up with every trend and, um, and just keep up with what are you going to really love a year from now? Because I guarantee you, if you think like that, these are pieces that are going to be in your closet forever. And do not get me wrong. I have a few things from Forever 21 that I've had for years. I have this beautiful paisley dress. It's a bit boho in style and I love it. Every time I wear it, I get compliments. I probably had it for like a good seven years and it probably cost me $20. But there's also a ton of things from Forever 21 that I no longer wear anymore and um, that I've gotten rid of. So I think it's just an interesting topic. It's just something to bring up into our consciousness. And um, I really want to know your thoughts on it because I do feel like it can be a bit of a touchy subject. I think it's really important to talk about, especially the environmental aspect of it. Comment below or message me or you know, slide into my DM, whatever, and uh, let me know what you guys think because I really think that it should be the way the world is moving forward as we do try to save our planet so our great, 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 great grandbabies can play on our beaches and drink our water and uh, lounge in the sun like we've been able to. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was some food for thought. And um, if you want to hear more about this concept and this idea, or even if you guys want like a little checklist um, of sort of like 10 things to go through in your mind before making a purchase or 10 things to go through in your mind when you're cleaning out your closet, let me know because I am more than happy to make a video on it. Comment below and if you liked this, give it a thumbs up. And if you like me, if you like my channel, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Also, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm really good at like mouth trumpet. like. Yep, that just happened. Fully just happened. Subscribe. Okay, thank you for watching. I'm always so grateful when uh, you guys show up and watch my videos and um, sending lots of love and positive vibes to you out in the world, wherever you are. In fact, I'd love to know where you guys actually are. So comment below and tell me like, hey from Sweden or hey from Denmark, because I freaking love that. Um, making connections all over the world. Anyway, <laughs> I will um, chat with you guys next time. Have a good day.